Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Crew First Culture Podcast. This is Jeremy, and thank you, as always, for joining me today, spending a little bit of time with me, and I'm going to just jump right on in it. So back home from Atlanta, just a, a really great trip. If you didn't listen to the last episode, had a, a great time there, just an amazing, I don't know. Like like I said the last episode, I I don't really know how to explain it. Just a just an amazing, incredible trip. Lots of of great time connecting with some some people that mean a lot to me. So really enjoyed it. Plus got to experience uh, the developing high performance class, twenty four hour straight class put on by the tactical resiliency training cadre led by rick george so that was pretty amazing as well but like i said i I talked a lot about that last episode and i don't want to cover it again today today i want to talk about a word that i don't really ever hear much and that's serendipity so up until probably about a year ago maybe maybe a little bit more but I, i probably to be honest couldn't even tell you what that meant Uh, i've heard it obviously but i never really paid enough attention and and knew truly what the word meant until i found the serendipity podcast which is something i have i've kind of referenced several times through the past year or so because it it feels like once i started listening to it Every episode I heard, I was I was taking notes down. Or there were not only not only notes, but there were truly one or two statements in every episode that just like hit me and spoke to me really, really deeply. And so it's it's a a, a great podcast. If you haven't heard it, if you haven't heard me talk about it, look it up. Serendipity podcast with Inky Johnson. The first season is just him and he interviews different guests every episode the second season is him and a co-host goes by the name of oak who is basically one of his mentors from i believe all the way back into his middle school years but also if you haven't heard of inky johnson that's probably where you need to start get on youtube and just just watch some of the videos that he has out just a, an amazing story an amazing speaker just very inspirational and man it it really makes you think about a lot of stuff you know what you have what you're taking advantage of and and everything in between but like i said that's kind of where the word finally got some meaning for me. And, you know, they talk about it a lot, obviously it's the name of the podcast and that's why he does the podcast. He'll say, he'll say that he used to think that when he met somebody, that's where they always were. You know, he, he didn't really realize that there was a journey that got them to that point. You know, if, if you meet somebody successful, it's easy to overlook that journey that got them there you just see them as somebody successful and and in your mind or in your or your perception it just seems like that's what they've always been but in more cases than not if not all cases there was a journey that got them there there was a process that got them there there was life situations that happened that took them on a a path that most likely was away from the path they were originally wanting but has led them to the path they were on and so that's kind of the the thought process behind that podcast like i said i i love it but sad thing is is they haven't recorded in a while and i'm I think this morning I listened to the very last one, so I'm all I'm all caught up, and they're gonna have to start putting out some more. But it it just made me really really think about us, and and when I say us, you know, I hope that 
that this branches out beyond the fire service, this podcast, because, you know, 85, 90% of what we talk about, it doesn't have anything to do with the fire service. You know, it has to do with life. It has to do with the things that every single person faces and deals with. So I, I hope that by now, you know, we, we've got a, a broader audience outside of the fire service, but Truthfully, there, it probably is the majority of our listeners still attached to the fire service or first responders as, of some kind, and that's great. I don't, I, if, if I can help somebody, whoever needs to hear it, whatever I have to say, I, I'm I'm happy. And so whatever it is you do, I appreciate that. But I'm just saying when I talk sometimes it, it does come from the lens of a firefighter a firefighter just because for 21 years now that's that's all I've done almost half of my life and so to get that out of the way I I do think of it in terms of the fire service and those that are that are within it and it could be it could be associated with EMS or, or police or whatever it is you do as well. But you know, what is the serendipity of your life? What is the serendipity of my life? And I kind of try to put some different words to serendipity. I didn't look up the actual definition, but this is kind of how I see it. So serendipity is when you're looking for something that you're wanting, but instead you find something that God wants for you. But then through time, you find out that that's exactly where you're supposed to be. That's exactly what you're meant to be doing. And so that's kind of my layman terms, layman's term of definition for serendipity and i believe that all of us have a story of some significance associated with that a quote that i i read this morning that was pretty powerful and and really applies is from myla kabat zen and they say each difficult moment has the potential to give my eyes sorry to open my eyes and open my heart. Each difficult moment has the potential to open my eyes and open my heart. And so that's kind of you know where we're at as far as the process of what is out there for us. It might not be what we're looking for. It might not be what we've always dreamed of. It might not be what we're working so hard to get. But that doesn't mean that all that work is in vain. That doesn't mean that our dreams won't be fulfilled. If, if we're putting in work for something that's good, that, that is something that we're so just looking forward to and, and so passionate about, God will find a way to use that work for what he truly has for you it might not look exactly like what you're wanting it to look like but it's not going to be wasted something that that is really sad to me that i've seen a lot of lately are people that you know they're they're senior senior members of the fire service members of the fire service that should be doing some great things for others in the fire service, helping them grow and, and challenging them and making the fire service better. But these people are putting nothing in to that job, nothing. More times than not, these people are, are so tied up with their personal part-time jobs And they put so much effort and energy and, and, and time into that, but give nothing 
to their true job, their full-time job, their, the, hopefully the, the purpose that they started out to serve. And that's the fire service. And it's sad to me. It, it truly is sad to me to see somebody that is such a negative drain on a crew or a department as far as the fire service goes. But then you see them on social media throwing out all this energy towards their part-time job and, and trying to get followers on this and that. And it, I, I don't even think sad's a, a great word for it anymore. I, I, I think it's, it's sickening almost. And I say that as somebody that has a social media or, or is trying to establish a social media presence. I, I get it. I get the irony of, of me saying this about other people, but I truly feel at peace with everything I post, everything I release on a podcast, everything I do socially, because everything I do is tied to my purpose. Everything I do is tied to the mission. And no, I'm, I'm not trying to make it sound like I am perfect. I am above others. I am better. I am just trying to verbalize the difference in my mind of the two. Do I care that people have part-time jobs? No, absolutely not. It's, it's an awesome benefit of our job when you're a career firefighter that you can not only work a great, you know, the best job in the world, but you also have plenty of time to work another job or own a business or do something else to add additional money to your family or whatever it is that you're getting out of that. So it's, it's great. I'm, I'll be very honest. I, I don't have an official part-time job. I haven't had an official part-time job in a long time. And I'm, I'm so thankful for that. A lot of those years I couldn't <laughs> because I had kids that I was a single parent of for many, many, many years. And, and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't afford the the daycare to to have a part time job, but now, you know, I, I have a wife that loves to work, and you know we're we're both in a place that I just I don't have to, and and so I enjoy taking care of the house and taking care of our property and taking care of the kids on my off days. And that is what I love. And so I'm very thankful that I don't have to spend more time away from my family and my home doing part-time work. But I will never, ever look down on somebody for doing that. So that, that's not the thing. It's, it's the fact that we have people in the fire service that they love being firemen. They love showing off the, the firefighter owned business tag on their, their vehicles. They love wearing the, the hat or the shirt on their videos that they're, they're posting and their, their shorts and their, you know, Instagram lives or whatever else talking about what they're doing in their side business. But what are they doing? At the firehouse, what are they doing to better themselves? What are they doing to better somebody else around them? What are they doing to better their crew? What are they doing to put them in a place to do the most good when somebody calls for help? And it's truly sad to see those that honestly care nothing about the fire service except for the benefits it gives them the 
bravado or whatever you want to call it that they feel they get from it the the status or, or whatever it is that they gain yet they put nothing into it and it just makes you want to think who were these people when they started their careers or or even better when they were trying to start their careers is that what they were is that what they were thinking as long as i could get on with the fire department i'll be able to to lay around all day let others do work for me and i can have more time for scheduling my part time jobs and then i'll have lots of time off to actually do my part time job i don't think that's the case i don't think I don't think that's the reason that those people join the fire service. I hope <laughs> there might be a few out there, but that's not the reason they did or originally. It's not the reason any of us have. We joined it because we wanted to make a difference. We joined the fire service because helping people is something that fulfilled us something that energized us playing with cool tools and and riding in awesome fire trucks and being a part of a team is something that we were so excited and so I, i've i've kind of possibly ju jump track here but getting back into the serendipity of it all and and using that term you know, what happens when we don't get what we want what happens when you know we find out that we truly aren't entitled to anything Are we still going to have the drive and the passion that we we started out with because we we loved it and we knew that that was a, a part of of who we should be a part of something bigger than us a part of something that that could be the purpose for why we are here but now it's just a job now it's a, a hassle. Now, if I have to go water a tree on a weekend, I'm going to lose my stuff. Because we don't do stuff on weekends. We, we get to, to lay around all day. Why have we allowed that mindset to be okay? You know, for me, I never, I never planned on being a firefighter in my, you know, school years. I never planned on being a firefighter until I literally basically turned in an application for the first time. I never really had a solid concrete plan. I, I would say the only dream I had was to play baseball just because I loved the game, not because the career of a major league baseball player looks appealing. It's awful. I'm, I'm very glad that I don't live, have to live that life. I, I love the game. I miss playing baseball, but there's no way that I would want to spend that much time away from my family. I don't care what they make. So what I'm saying is I, I was never just so tied and so passionate about something that it, it was hard to let go of like a lot of people are. So, you know, from a standpoint like that, maybe I don't truly understand some people out there in their journey. And I, I get that. But. I will tell you this, my personal life has definitely not lived up to the dream that I had for it. 
the the life that I would have written out for myself did not follow the script, not by any stretch of the imagination. God had a different plan for me. I don't know. I don't know why he chose me to to bless me so greatly like he has. But I'm so thankful for that. Something else I heard this morning, and I'll leave with this, is you can't slow down or speed up a river. The river is going to flow how it's going to flow. The only thing we can do is we can jump in and we can go with it. And we can have the faith that it will take us where we need to be when we need to be there. And so that's that's a good thought to end with, I think. I think that's a good kind of reflection point to to take back and spend some time. Where are you trying to slow down those rivers in your life? Where are you trying to speed up those rivers in your life? Where are you avoiding the rivers in your life because of whatever it is you're avoiding? You don't have control of where you should be. The plan you have for your life is not the best plan for your life. There is a mission out there that is made for you. There is a purpose out there that you were made for. We have to jump in the river. We have to have that faith that it will take us where we need to be, where we are meant to be. And it will take us there and get us there when we are supposed to be there. We're just on the journey, people. We are not navigating quicker we understand and believe and, and truly live by that, the, the easier this whole journey will be. I hope you're having a great day. I hope that I didn't ramble on too far from, from where the original thoughts were, but just some things that are on my mind today. I, I hope you have a great day, a great weekend. And I appreciate your support so very, very much. Thank you so much. And until next time, as always, stay humble and do work.